trout grilled in prosciutto with lemon and dill. This actually crunches when you bite into it. Swordfish steak and bake with mango salsa. A fried fish sandwich never tasted so good. And a spectacular cedar plank salmon with miso glaze. It is so neat the way that cedar aroma flavors the fish. Three great ways to grill fish. No fears, no tears. I'm Stephen Reichland, and from the beautiful Tubac Golf Resort in Southern Arizona, it's time to fire up the grill. To judge from your emails, a lot of people have problems grilling fish. Does your fish, A, stick to the grill grate, B, break when you try and turn it, C, come out raw in the center, or D, hopelessly overcook? Well, if one of these problems sound familiar, listen up. I'm going to show you three great fail-proof ways to grill fish. Planking is about the easiest way I know of to grill fish. And because you cook it on a plank uh, in one fell swoop, you eliminate the problem of fish sticking to the grill grate and the fish falling apart when you turn it. Plank salmon burst upon the American grill scene in the 1990s. It was love at first bite and first sight. We loved the incredible aroma of the soaked cedar plank, and we loved how outrageously cool the plank salmon looked on the grill. I have here wild sockeye salmon. Normally it comes with the bones removed, but you can always run your finger over the top of the fillet, and if you find a bone, just pull it out with a needle nose plier. So, first step, turn the salmon over, lightly brush the bottom with olive oil or sesame oil, then season with coarse salt and freshly ground or cracked black peppercorns. Place the salmon on the soaked cedar plank, and it's really important, folks, to soak the planks so that they steam rather than catch fire. Now, season the top, again, with a little bit of coarse sea salt and cracked black pepper. Okay, in keeping with the pack rim origins of this dish, we'll top the fish with a miso glaze. Miso is a cultured soybean paste from Japan. It's sweet and salty, and uh, you can use uh, many different varieties. This is white miso, uh, this is red miso. Both are excellent for this dish. Combine equal parts miso and mayonnaise, then add sugar, freshly grated lemon zest, and white pepper. And whisk these ingredients together to make a smooth glaze. Okay, so spread the miso glaze on top of the salmon. And you just want enough to coat the entire fish. And there's your plank salmon ready for grilling. Now, if you want a slightly more formal version of this dish, you can use individual cedar planks. Cut your fish, we'll take a nice uh, center cut section here, and we can cut about a two inch piece, place the fish uh, running diagonal to the board. And again, we season with coarse salt and our cracked or freshly ground black pepper and spread the fish with the glaze. Let me show you how I've set up the grill. Now, we're going to indirect grill the salmon, but I like to preheat it with all six burners on, so it's really screaming hot. We'll put the big plank and the small planks in the front. And turn off the burners 
that are directly under the planks, okay? So classic indirect grilling, but you wanna work at a slightly higher temperature. Then close the grill, take about 20 to 30 minutes for the fish. Meanwhile, let me show you a great fennel fresh orange slaw to serve with the plank salmon. Fennel makes a great slaw to serve with grilled salmon because it's sweet and licorice -y. So it sort of plays off the sweetness in the miso. So the part we use the fennel for the slaw is the bulb, but you can also use the leaves as an herb and garnish. So thinly sliced fennel in the bowl. These are fresh orange segments, very light, fresh slaw. The fennel leaves, finely chopped garlic, fresh lemon juice, extra virgin olive oil, salt, coarse sea salt, and freshly ground black pepper. Simply toss these ingredients together. The clean licorice flavor of fennel makes a great accompaniment for fish. So I'll just simply transfer this to a serving bowl. And you can garnish it with a sprig of fennel leaves. Plank fish is traditionally associated with the Pacific Northwest. I have, however, seen uh, 19th century recipes for plank fish that originate on the East Coast. I think it's one of those ideas that just sprang up in many places at once. It's been about 25 minutes and the fish is cooked to perfection. And the way you tell it's done, squeeze the sides and you'll feel it will break into clean flakes. Now, the beauty of plank salmon is that, A, the fish never touches the grate, so it won't stick to the grill grate, and B, because you cook it on one side, you don't need to worry about turning it. There's your plank salmon with uh, miso glaze and orange and fennel slaw. Looks pretty terrific. Let's see how we did. Mmm. It is so neat the way that cedar aroma flavors the fish. And let me just take a bite of the fennel orange slaw here. Mmm. This dish really came together in about a half an hour. So it's something you could make on a busy weeknight. The biggest challenge with grilling trout, uh, pretty much like grilling every fish, is leaving some portion of it stuck to the grill grate when you go to turn it or remove it from the grill. Well, I had the idea to use paper-thin slices of prosciutto. It looks really cool, and it works great. Your fish will not stick to the grill grate. Remember that American camping classic, trout cooked with bacon over an open fire? Well, here's the uptown version, featuring trout stuffed with lemon and dill and wrapped and grilled in prosciutto. It's another strategy for keeping fish from sticking to the grill grate. Uh, we have beautiful Idaho trout here, and the first step is to trim off the fins using kitchen shears. This is purely aesthetic, but remember, we eat with our eyes as well as our palate. Next, open up the trout and season it first with coarse salt and cracked or freshly ground black pepper, finely chopped fresh dill, and a couple slices of lemon. And then to keep the fish nice and moist, you can squirt it with a little extra virgin olive oil. The next step is wrapping and tying the fish. So cut yourself about 12 or 14 inches of butcher string. This must be real uh, cotton string, by the way, and not synthetic. And lay a slice of prosciutto ham on top. Next, lay the fish on top of the prosciutto and you can season the uh, outside with a little bit more salt and pepper. Lay another slice of prosciutto on top of the trout 
and then tie the prosciutto in place with the string. Now, this is a cool knot I learned from one of my students who's a surgeon. You loop through twice and pull the string, and that second loop actually locks the string in place. So you can tie it like a conventional knot. And the last step, again, just to prevent sticking, brush the tops of the trout with a little vegetable oil or olive oil. Let me show you the grill. Here's a new grill to add to your collection. It belongs to a family of grills called the Kamado Cooker. Now, it has several features. And the first is this uh, venting system, which allows you to go from a very low heat to a very high heat in a matter of seconds. The second are these thick ceramic walls, which uh, work great for holding in heat and moisture. We'll simply place the grill grate in the grill. Now, put the trout on. And when you place the trout on the grill, go oil side down to start. Close the grill lid and adjust these vents so that you attain a grilling temperature of about 350 degrees. It's that simple to control the heat. Okay, don't forget to check on your fish, and it uh, helps to have a big head spatula uh, to turn the fish. Let's take a look. And if one fish is cooking faster than the other, all you need to do is just uh, change positions. In general, the fish in the center cook a little bit more quickly than the fish on the outside. And you can see these are not sticking at all. Here's a lemon dill mustard sauce that goes great with any grilled fish, especially trout. It starts with mayonnaise, sour cream, mustard, and I like uh, Dijon mustard for this, but you could also use a honey mustard if you want a touch of sweetness. Uh, lemon zest, chopped fresh dill, which reinforce the lemon dill flavor in the trout, and finally, fresh lemon juice. Simply whisk the ingredients together. You can see I'm working over ice. Always a good idea to keep any mayonnaise-based sauce over ice. And that's the sauce. I think the trout are ready. Wow, they look fantastic. So how do you know they're cooked? Well, first of all, they're golden brown. You press the trout and you can feel the meat sort of flake under your finger. And if you really want to make sure, you can make a little cut in the back of the trout and just check that the meat next to the bone is fully cooked. So, let's take off the trout. And uh, I love to serve grilled fish on a banana leaf. We'll take this one off, and you can see we have absolutely no sticking. And of course, don't forget to remove the string. Secret number two for no stick fish, wrap it in prosciutto or bacon. Now let's see how we did here. Cut a little piece of fish and our mustard dill sauce. Mmm. This is really delicious. What's nice is how the prosciutto flavors the trout. And it also it gets almost crackling crisp, so this actually crunches when you bite into it. Many years ago, when I first started traveling the world's barbecue trail, I went to the islands of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. And shark and bake is a popular beach food. Now, it's not actually grilled. Traditionally, the shark is seasoned with local herbs and deep fried. And the bake is actually a flatbread that is also deep fried. But I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could take these two deep fried dishes and cook them on the grill? 
I've always believed that if something tastes good baked, fried, or sautéed, it probably tastes even better grilled. It brings us to the third secret of non-stick fish grilling. Choose a firm steak fish, like swordfish, shark, or tuna. I'm using swordfish. So the first step in any Trinidadian recipe is to make what's called the paramen seasoning. Uh, it begins with chopped fresh scallion, shallot, garlic, celery, chopped fresh parsley and cilantro, chopped fresh mint, mmm, thyme. We have chopped bell peppers and scotch bonnet chilies. And the scotch bonnet, sometimes known as the habanero, is the world's hottest chili, 50 times hotter than a jalapeno. Next, add fresh lime juice, about three quarters of a cup of water, salt, and pepper to taste. Puree these ingredients in a blender. By the way, when you make any seasoning, always taste it to make sure it's got enough salt and pepper. Woo, that's pretty hot. So we'll pour the paramin seasoning over the swordfish or shark. And you want to turn each piece of fish to coat with seasoning on both sides. Marinate the fish for three to four hours. And you can see I've got it over a pan of ice to keep it cold. So while the fish is marinating, let me show you how to make the bakes. The bakes are a basic flatbread. You begin with yeast and sugar. To this mixture, add a tablespoon of warm water and stir to dissolve the yeast. Okay. I have here two and a half cups of flour. And to this, I'll add salt, baking powder, the yeast mixture, and enough water to obtain a thick but pliable dough. And process the ingredients until the dough comes together into a sort of smooth ball. Now, what you want to do is oil a large bowl, and then you can flour your fingers and pull the dough out of the processor and form a smooth ball. And place it in the bowl. Cover the bowl with plastic wrap and let the dough rise until doubled in bulk. That will take about an hour. Now, you may not see bread making supplies by the grill side at most American barbecues, but you know what? As you travel around the world's barbecue trail, grilled bread is a constant. Okay, we've got the bake. We've got the swordfish. The final component is the mango salsa. It starts with diced ripe mango, cucumber for crunch, red bell pepper for color, finely chopped scallion, and fiery scotch bonnet chili for flavor, a little brown sugar for sweetness, candy ginger for punch, rice vinegar, and chopped fresh mint. Simply toss these ingredients together. Now this may seem a little complicated, but each part can be prepared well ahead of time. You can see the dough has risen till doubled in bulk, and I just divided it into four balls. Take a ball of dough and put it on your cutting board. You want to roll it out with a rolling pin. And actually, you'll see pit masters in India uh, doing this with naan right at the side of the grill. Okay, so now comes the moment of truth. We grill the bread. And we'll start by oiling the grill grate, as we always do. We're using these twin portable gas grills. 
And next, brush the top of each flatbread with oil. And arrange the flatbread oiled side down on the hot grate. And while the breads are grilling, brush the tops with oil. So once the dough starts to bubble on top, just give each bake a turn and cook the other side the same way. Look how the dough blisters. And you can brush the bakes with a little more oil. Now let's grill the swordfish. On goes the Paramin marinated swordfish. Okay, and the fish is ready for turning. Mmm, wow, look at that. You can really smell the aroma of the Scotch bonnet chili. And there'll just be another minute. Meanwhile, I'll take off the bakes. And that is some grilled bread. Okay, by now the swordfish should be cooked. And remember, we use that flake test, I press the fish and it breaks into clean flakes. Because the swordfish is so thin, it cooks really quickly. So here's the fish and here's the bait. Let me show you how to put it together. Take a flatbread and a piece of fish and a spoonful of the salsa fish and bake because a fried fish sandwich never tasted so good. Mm. So there you have it. Fish on a plank, fish in a wrap, fish and bake, fish that doesn't stick to the grill grate. See you next time. Fish is one of the most challenging foods to grill. And it's challenging because A, it either sticks to the grill grate, or B, it falls apart when you try and turn it. And listen, I have as much trouble with it as everybody else. I decided to dedicate this show to grilling fish, and in particular to three methods that solve those two problems, fish sticking to the grill grate and fish falling apart when you turn it.